Welcome back. So, let's take a look at more household appliances. And today we're going to look at washing machines, clothes washing machines. And we're going to find that they have not changed nearly as much as we might have expected over the years. So, when we come back... Well, this is a picture showing you a woman washing clothes out at a river, banging them on the rocks, and this is how she's doing it. Now, it's very tempting to say, oh yes, this is how primitive peoples wash their clothes, because in fact, that's true. But I would imagine it would surprise most of us to learn that over five billion, and that's billion with a B, five billion people are still cleaning their clothes like this today. Yeah, apparently clothes washing machines are strictly the province of the industrialized world. So, let's take a look at how we got from here to where we are today, because I think this is a story that will surprise some of you. So, we went from our distant ancestors and the river and the rocks to Mima here with a tub and a washboard. Virtually no change. All she has done is gathered up the water from the river and replaced the rocks with a washboard. Essentially, the job has remained unchanged. Now, yes, she is using soap, but soap has been around for a very long time. And let's hope, of course, that she didn't have to make her own soap, as many people before her did. But this basically is what washing looked like from, well, I guess the very dawn of human civilization right up until, for some of us, the 20th century. So, where did we go from here? Well, here we've got another Mima, and she's got the same tub, and she is washing her clothes the same way. I don't know if you can tell, but she's got the same washboard in that tub. The difference here is the addition of that mangle. And that was a huge benefit, because prior to this, the clothing had to be wrung out by hand. And that is a difficult and tedious job. The mangle did it much more efficiently, as well as with considerably less human effort. You cranked the lever, the rollers turn, the clothes go through. The water, by the way, all stays in your tub so you can use it again. Definitely a big improvement, and this is an improvement that stayed with us for a long period of time. Now, as you will notice from the way our, our lady here is dressed, and of course, we have the quality of the photograph, this is going well into the 20th century. This sort of laundry apparatus was used right up until the 50s. And remember, we've discussed this before. It was in the mid-century before many uh, families in the United States had running water and electricity. So you would see people 
doing laundry like this in the 40s, in the 50s. And as I mentioned when we started, five billion people are still doing their laundry even without the benefit of the mangle. Now, this is what it looks like. This, by the way, is not a real, well, it's a working mangle, but it's a miniature. This is a toy. The reason I wanted to show you this as opposed to an actual functioning mangle is so you could see how very simple the technology is. You have two rollers, you have a crank attached to one of them. Now with a real working mangle, you would probably have a clamp or a pair of clamps that would be used to adjust the, the height of the rollers. In other words, more space for thicker, heavier items, less space for thinner, lighter items. But just like that, it's the simplest of technologies. Now, it wasn't always that simple. This is an 18th century washing machine. Yeah, I know you really need me to tell you that because, quite frankly, I thought it was part of a horseless carriage. The hammers, and those are those long things that got little D's on them, hammers would bash the dirt out of the clothing and that's how they got clean. It seems extremely bizarre to us. In fact, this is not a system that caught on, but it does indicate where their minds were going when they were starting to develop this technology. We're still back in that bang your clothes on the rocks mindset. Here's another one. And this, interestingly enough, we still got our little hammers. Those are those odd little foot-like projections. This is a patent application, by the way. Uh, the odd little foot-like projections on the rod. It's a primitive agitator. You would put your clothes into this tub. You would stick that agitator in and swish it around and the little hammer feet would bang at your clothes and clean them. Yeah. Okay. I have to grant this is probably less work than beating them on rocks by the side of a river, but it rather resembles a butter churn. And I have to wonder if our modern washers were not based on butter churn technology. This is another example of an early washing machine, uh, a design for it. I've seen composters like this, by the way. So I have to say, if you wanted a washing machine like this, just buy yourself one of those rotating drum composters. In this case, you throw your clothes, your water, your soap in, and you turn the crank, and the clothes are bounced around in the water and cleaned. This, by the way, is a 1940s version of this much older technology, which just goes to show you how long this technology was in use. Very primitive. On the other hand, I am going to say this. I have a feeling this was a lot easier on the clothes than beating them with hammers, pounding them on rocks, or rubbing them on washboards. Now, here we have a Gibson girl. And I love these illustrations because, as I say, you can look at the women and judge from their clothing and their hairdos exactly what time period we're looking at. And my yes, Gibson girl. So this is somewhere between around 19, or 1890 and 1910. What we have here is a large drum. 
and the drum is full of water. We have a crank on the side, and that crank allows her to rock the tub back and forth using the, the agitation of the washer to clean the clothing, and then she feeds it through the mangle and hand cranks in order to get the excess water out. Very clever. In fact, this is, this is a, a major technological advance because we're going to see that things do not change very much for the next few decades. What we have here is a, a very similar device to what our Gibson girl was using. We have a tub. The tub would be filled with water. There is uh, an X-shaped bar inside, and that would agitate the clothes. And then we have the hand-cranked mangle. And as you can see, used, used right through um, the modern era. And this is a modern mangle. You can go out and buy this very mangle. I think I got this image from Amazon. People still use this. Uh, people who are off the grid, that's where uh, one section of the market that's very popular, or also people who do a lot of hand washing of particularly delicate clothing. And these are, they're still available, they're still in use. What we have here is a washing machine. And this is where we go from the mangle and the hand cranked agitator. This is an electric machine. The agitator is going to rotate back and forth. It's powered by electricity. And the mangle also is electrically powered. You're, you're able to turn this on. The rollers rotate automatically and you feed the clothing in. Remarkably labor saving, but please note, we're really cleaning our clothes very much the same way that clothes were being cleaned more than a thousand years ago. So let's take a look at this. This is an ad from the late 20s, early 30s, because this is going to show you how those early machines worked. You fill the machine from your sink and the faucet would have been threaded to accommodate that hose. Anyone who has seen those old sinks knows this because the threads are just exposed on the end of the spigot. You affixed your hose, ran the water into your machine, the electricity agitated it, uh, and this looks like it was a standard agitation machine, um, and it would have operated the mangle as well. Also, when you are through, you have another hose, and that hose evacuates the water from your washing machine and into your sink. Now, in the U.S., it became very popular to locate the machine outside on the back porch, right under the window over the kitchen sink. So, you would feed the hose out the window, do your laundry on the back porch, and then when it came time to evacuate the water, you just let it spill out into the vegetable patch. Uh, of course, different times people were very conservative. But what we know from this is that for a large portion of the U.S. population, a washer and subsequently the dryer as well were items that were appropriate for the back porch. This is one of the main differences between 
laundry in the US and laundry in the UK, but we'll get into that later. Now, what we're looking at here is uh, a washing machine. This is electric. This is also from the period of late 20s, early 30s. And at this point, they've gotten squared off. This is simply a variation in style. And in general, uh, this was just a matter of personal choice. The machines usually operated in very much the same way, regardless of the exterior shape. Now this, by the way, is a new Ringer washer. This is not an old one. Just goes to show you these things are still in use in certain parts of the world. What you can see here very clearly if you look on the right hand side is there's that little pipe shaped sort of like a shepherd's crook. That's the pipe that's going to evacuate the water out of the machine and into the sink. Another thing you're going to notice is the machine is backed up to the kitchen sink. When you're through with the washing and you're running the clothing through the mangle, it drops off straight into the kitchen sink, which is where, you know, any excess water, any dripping is going to go. And then from there into the laundry basket and out on the clothesline. People absolutely had very fixed ways of dealing with this. So let's take a look at some of the style options that were available. Uh, first of all, we have green. Green was a huge, huge color in the 1930s. In the 1930s, if you had a kitchen, odds are that kitchen was green. And notice also, this is the same machine you could completely spin that mangle around. You could just flip it 360 degrees, meaning you could adjust it to deposit the clothes over a laundry basket if you wanted. It made things easier. Here we have green. The, this, this actually looks like a different uh, shade of green, but we have green and we have a similar model in pink and white. Here we have blue and white. So they were coming in a variety of colors. Oh, look, yellow. Uh, another green and white. And we'll follow up on this later. Notice the two tubs. Here is red and white. And this is what that machine would look like head on. Uh, 1940s, this is a much more uh, stylish sort of piece. Now, here's our double tub. And this, by the way, is a new piece, as you can tell. So how these work is the larger tub is used to wash the clothes. This is where your soapy water is. You're probably thinking, well, the smaller tub is for rinsing. No, no, you're rinsing in the same tub. You have to manually change out the water. When the clothes are fully rinsed, you pull them out wet, drop them into the smaller tub, and the smaller tub spins so that the centrifugal force is what wrings them out. We no longer have a mangle. And what we have now is pretty much the same way a modern washer eliminates the excess water. Now, as I said, this is a modern piece. This one is the same piece from the 1940s. So we've had that technology for quite a while. I only used the previous new piece for purposes of illustration because you can actually see it a little better than you can see this older piece. But yeah, we are talking about an 80-year-old washing machine here. And this is a brand new machine. This is from the Hitachi Company of Japan. This machine, uh, which I believe is made for an Asian market. And let's take a look at another shot of this. Notice the two tubs. 
The tub on the left is the larger one. That's the washing tub. The tub on the right is the spinning tub. Still in use in many parts of the world. Now, back to the 1940s. This Hoover is an example of a machine that would agitate the clothing slowly with the soap and water and even the rinse water and then agitate much more quickly in order to spin the clothing. I don't want to say dry. Dry is an overstatement. But to spin it, it's to spin the excess water out, to spin it into a condition where you could hang it on the line. This, however, is a washer-dryer combination. And notice our lovely lady, and I, I tell you, this is one of the great things about these ads. All you have to do is know a little bit about hairstyles and clothing fashions, and you can easily see that the lady here is a 1950s housewife. Look at that machine. Combination washer-dryer. It washed your clothes, it spinned out the excess water, and then tumble-dried. So, we think it's a new idea, not even close. Now, this is another set of uh, appliances, washer and dryer, from the 1950s. It was in the 1950s that uh, clothes dryers started to make their presence felt. The technology had been around a while before then, but given the cost of these machines, it was a great luxury to have a clothes dryer. And for people who lived in warmer parts of the country, where drying their clothes on the line was a perfectly reasonable option, a dryer was considered something of a luxury. But please look at the style, because I look at that, and I'll tell you, I see my own washer and dryer there. And this is clearly 1950s, look at how she's dressed. Now we're moving into the 60s, and again, very few changes we are seeing some minor changes in terms of technology. Our washers are offering us different cycles. They're offering us temperature control. But other than that, we still have that agitator. And the dryer is still simply tumbling the clothes in heated air. And here's that agitator. Now, this is actually showing off the lint filter in the agitator, but it does give you a good view, not just of the agitator inside the machine, but if you look just below, you see a nice picture of the agitator itself. Well, I'm just not seeing a lot of difference between this and that wonderful 18th century little hammer-beating agitator. This is an encapsulation of the technology. We go from Mima with a tub and a washboard to the agitator and mangle, eventually coming to be powered by electricity, modern washing machine. Not a lot of changes. But notice what all three of these pictures have in common. Tub, tub, tub. We were very functionally fixed about what a washing machine was supposed to look like. And basically, here in the U.S., we wanted it to look like Grandma's tub. We've talked about this before, that people stick with what they know. And in case of the washing machine, it was a question of minor technological changes over a long period of time. We had gotten used to a tub, and the little increments in improvements came along gradually, and we were still stuck on that tub notion. 
So let's take a look at something that, well, it didn't catch on right away, not here in the U.S. 1950s, and this is front-loading stackable washer and dryer. When we take a look at something like this, I don't know about the rest of you, but I see British laundry. Now, there's a reason that the British uh, accepted the style change of a front-loading washer more quickly and more easily than we did, and that's the Second World War. For us here in the U.S., we had the post-war economic boom, we had a lot of prosperity, and we spent our money on household appliances. In the U.K., they were still recovering from the war. They had a war on their soil. It cost them just an unbelievable amount, not just in money, in lives, in resources. They had to rebuild. Washing machines were simply a luxury people couldn't afford. So in the UK, most people in the 1950s were still using non-electric washing machines. They still had that old drum and the hand-cranked mangle. When they did start using electric machines, things had changed and they were much more open to new ideas. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't have our history of keeping the washer and dryer because originally it was a washer. But believe me, when I was a girl, I can remember every house in my neighborhood, both the washer and the electric dryer were living out on the back porch. It's where you did your laundry. They didn't have that history. So when washers and subsequently dryers came into their homes, they put them in the kitchen, which is something that is very unusual for us. When Americans go to the UK, go into somebody's house, we see their laundry appliances in the kitchen. It's just, that leaves us speechless. It's differences in how the technology was absorbed into the culture. For us, it was gradual. So we wanted the continuity. For them, it was sudden. So the continuity was not that important. So let's take a look at stackable washers and dryers as they evolved, because this is what a stackable washer-dryer pair looked like in the 80s. But let's take a look at this. This is what it looks like today. So here we go, 50s, and here we are 70 years later. We have gone right back to that original design. Interesting. Oh, and by the way, the technology has simply not changed all that much. What we are looking at is essentially a few choices in heat settings, water temperature. That's about it. And this, I thought we would take a look at high-end washer-dryer combinations today, 21st century. This is where we are today. And so just remember what it looked like in the 50s. The interesting thing about home laundry is how few improvements we have made, not just over the last 70 years, but from the very beginning of time. We have gone to manually beating our clothes against something. In this case, it's grandma and the washboard to having them either agitated, which is top loading machines, or rotated, which is how front loaders work. And I'm just not seeing a huge difference here. 
So let me just quickly mention, for those of you who are wondering, what is the difference between a front-load machine and a top-load machine? There are a few. The first thing I'm going to tell you is a front-load machine is easier on your clothes. Plain and simple, if you have nice clothes, get a front-load machine. However, if you have a lot of clothes or they're very dirty, use a top loader. And the reason for that is top loaders are, have a larger capacity and that agitation bar will do a better job of cleaning really dirty items. Now, the reason that we are seeing the emergence of the front loader now is for one thing, we no longer have such huge families. We no longer have um, ironing day, put the clothes out on the line. Wash now is something that can be done anytime you have a few minutes to throw the clothes in the washer and then a few more minutes to pull them out and throw them in the dryer. It used to be an all-day event. So, that's making this more popular. Keep in mind, front loaders use less energy. And oh, the, the reason for that, by the way, is gravity assists them. The clothes are cleaned by simply being tossed around in the machine. And as the machine is rotating... Gravity is assisting that process. So I would have to say, if you don't have a large family or you do your laundry more frequently than maybe, I don't know, once a month, you're probably going to do better with a front loading machine. If you have a large family or you tend to put off doing your laundry, go with the top loader. It'll clean the ground in dirt better, and you can throw more clothing into the machine. If you have delicate items, or even not even necessarily delicate items, because I can tell you one of my pet peeves with the agitator machine is how quickly they will shred a nice set of sheets. So, yes, my next machine is going to be a front loader. No two ways around it. I'm just tired of replacing sheets. So, this is where you have it. The history of washers. And we threw in a bit of the history of dryers, too. If you are doing a retro kitchen and you want to include laundry in it, the simple truth is you can even do a mid-century kitchen with modern appliances and nothing more than a can of spray paint because those appliances have changed so little over the years that unless you know you're looking at a modern machine, you wouldn't know you're looking at a modern machine. All right. That is what I have for you today. We're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I hope you all have a terrific day. And for those of you who stick around for just chatting, we will be up 8 o'clock this evening. And that's 8 o'clock New York City time. All right. Have a terrific day.